I think okay. what you want to know at this point is who's getting hospitalized and who's dying. Who, who are those people? Um, how old are they? Do they have comorbidities? Are they taking drugs that are immune suppressive? Have they gotten vaccines? If so, which vaccine? When did they get their vaccines? That's what you need to know. So, so and, and especially for children who have been vaccinated now can be vaccinated down to six months of age. Um, are there differences? Because when you when you make a recommendation for children, for example, the 12 to 15 year old or the 5 to 11 year old or now the less than five year old, you, you, you have a difference in dosing, say, between the 11 year old child and the 12 year old child, even though there's not a tremendous biological difference between those two children, as well as the sort of four year old yeah. versus five-year-old or six-year-old. So do they need boosters? For how long is that, or, the, or is immunity, again, against severe disease going to last? It's a little harder in children because it's just general rule, children don't get severe disease. I mean, they are said another way, they have, they are 1,000 fold less likely to suffer a severe disease than say someone who's over 65. But I think that's what you need to know. And so, so for me, for example, I had three doses of the vaccine. My third dose was in November, 2021. I got a mild infection in May. So probably with BA2, one of the Omicron on subvariants. Am I, I don't plan to get a booster dose. And, and what I'd like to know is, do I ever need a booster dose? Or am I protected against severe disease for two years, five years, 10 years? They need to provide those data. And, because right now, we don't know. So what ends up happening is the fallback position is, all right, we don't know. Let's just boost everybody. And, and, and worse, I think we're heading into a time where people may go, well, let's just make this a yearly vaccine. When this is an influenza, I, I'm not sure. I don't think we, at, at least as it stands, need a yearly vaccine, or at least not everybody needs a yearly vaccine. So if we're going to do that. Define who needs it. Prove who needs it. Do you, do you think, so, so your letter was all about, let's realize that this strategy isn't reasonable. Do you think that CDC, uh, FDA are going to realize this or they're going to just make a new booster every year whenever it is that they feel like it, right? You would think in a better world, I'm not sure <laughs> that world, but you would think in a better world that we really learned a lesson here. Uh, for, for at the very least, think of all the money that was spent making a BA1 vaccine, and by the time you were considering it, BA1 was gone. All the money that was spent making a BA4, BA5 vaccine, and now that represents probably less than 25% of what's circulating, and the rest of what's circulating is not going to be as susceptible to that vaccine. Can, can we just say that we've learned this lesson and stopped doing this and just pay attention to a variant or variants that arise that are, are really resistant to protection against severe disease and focus our effort on that because this chasing variants is a losing game. And I think you shouldn't play games you can't win.